All right, ladies and gents, how you guys doing? Sean here at Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hopefully you guys are having a great day in this hobby. Um, so I wanted to take some time to talk about kind of like a little bit of news that, um, that might impact a lot of you in terms of coin grading. Now, coin grading has, has been one of the most popular things anybody can do, right? The prospect of sending a coin out to get graded in the hopes that it's going to improve or enhance the value of said coin, you know, it's fun and exciting, you know? Uh, at the same time, there's a little element of gamble that comes with it. Uh, not too much of a gamble because you're still left with a commodity that has value, um, unless you're you know, sending out a 2023 Lincoln sent out there to get graded, which I would never personally do, by the way. Um, uh, my days of ultra modern grading is long over and I'm focusing more on the classics because that's where I kind of like make a living. All right. That, that's where I make a living aside from doing my YouTube content and all my other social medias going right now. Um, but there is, in case you guys haven't haven't noticed there is a grading company that's making waves in the industry cac grading okay also known as cac g c a c g um they are they are out there as a way of kind of a checks and balances for all the other coin grading companies and what exactly does that mean well there has been this ugly little word that has floated out there over the course of the last, I would say, 15 years, if not longer, and that's gradeflation. What in the hell is gradeflation? Gradeflation pretty much sums it up as it sounds. Um, grades being a lot higher than the coins deserve. And um, the, the grading standards uh, from the eyes of PCGS, NGC, you know, here's a PCGS graded holder. It's the most popular out there, of course. Uh, here's NGC, you know, that's a black intercourse slab. Uh, most of the ones you do come across are white on the inside. Um, this is actually a 25th anniversary slab. NGC has been around the block, been in the game for a while. And um, those are kind of like your top two grading companies. And then CAC G emerged last year as being another alternative, but in a way has been around the game. For many years, okay. Um, I, I didn't put out an example here uh, of a um, of any other graded coin with what they call a green or gold sticker. Maybe this is as close as it'll get. This is actually a CAC G, CAC -G graded coin. It's uh, a beautiful 1883 O toner. All right, um, and on the back it's blast white. But what they used to do, this company. They used to certify already graded coins by PCGS and NGC. And if they feel like the coin is undergraded, uh, respective to what is assigned on the label, they'll either give it a green or a gold sticker. And um, green means that's probably undergraded by a point, and a gold sticker means, wow, they really m missed on that one, and it's undergraded by about two points. And um, for a long time, that's what this company is known for. But last year, they announced that they are getting in the game of being another grading company. And guess what? They're operating like it's 1985 all over again. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, back when coin grading came into prominence, which is pretty close to 40 years by now, you know, your top grading companies were Annex, okay? At the time, I believe a gentleman by the name of David Hall was still very much a part of that company. And he's, even to this day, one of the renowned numismatists out there. Um, but he had his own grading company. As a matter of fact, you know, if you went online, you might be able to still find some of his old grading little two-by-twos uh, called David Hall Flips. Um, they, they're... They're, they're not particularly cheap to obtain because they represent the first kind of foray into coin grading from the annex perspective. 
This is kind of like an example of what an early annex graded coin used to look like. All right, this is uh, this is again from that mid to late '80s. Um, they call this a soapbox holder. I mean, as you can tell, it looks like a plain white um, bar of soap. You know, kind of like ivory or some brand like that. Uh, but this is how they used to do it back in the day, and it was very simplistic. Um, but at the same time, this was a period of time in the infancy of coin grading where everybody was kind of playing on the same like level, you know, a, a level playing field is what you call it. And what do I mean by that? Well, they really adhered and they were really strict to what we call the grading standard all across the board. Um, and you had various executives, you had coin graders that all kind of followed the same philosophy 40 years ago. So in a way, a lot of the coins back in the day were graded strictly based off of this grading standard, okay? To us here 40 years later in our hot tub time machine, we look back and a lot of people to this day, you could talk to anybody, hey, what do you think about the earliest graded coins from the 80s, whether it's a, a soapbox annex or an early PCGS Rattler, this one's again from the 80s, you know, what are your thoughts on those type of coins? And they're going to unequivocally, probably a vast majority of the people are going to say, wow, they're pretty undergraded. Okay. A lot of those coins are about half a point to two points undergraded. Um, there are certain circumstances where they've hit the spot, but the rationale is people would buy these type of coins that are in these older graded holders and they would send them out to the current, what we call gradeflation later kind of grading standards, um, and they would get their point bump, all right, whether it's deserved or not. Uh, so they would cross over these coins, they'd either crack it out, or they would just send the coin as is to PCGS again. You know, there's a lot of instances where the old Rattlers would end up back to PCGS for an upgrade consideration. All right, and oftentimes most of those coins would get one to two points in grade bump. And you know, with coins like this where you have toning, back in the day, they really didn't weigh the grading heavily on the toning, they weighed it on what the coin actually looks like. Um, how clean are the surfaces? Are there a lot of contact marks? How good is the strike? You know, things like that. Whereas today, they heavily weigh things like toning toward the actual numerical grade that goes into the holder, whether it's PCGS or NGC. Um, so it was certainly different times back in the day. It was a lot what we call today in today's standards, a lot more strict. And that's the big reason why that a lot of current, um, I, I guess you could call grade flippers, you know, they're the folks that buy strictly the old stuff. So that way they could send it back to the current graders of today, whether it's PCGS or NGC, to get those grade bumps. Because all it takes is one grade bump, depending on the coin, to take a coin that you had purchased for $1,500, grade it, comes back one full grade point higher, and that could very easily bump up to $2,500 to $3,000. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how people are making their money strictly by buying, regrading, and reselling the same coins in today's current holders. So I showed you this example of a CAC G holder, all right? Now you're gonna notice how pretty toned this is, but take a look at the grade. Mid-state 60, that's a numerical grade that you seldomly see come up in any other holder. And then, you know, the big question is why? Why don't we have more mid-state 60 numerical grades and instead we have more AU 58s, okay, which is about uncirculated 58. Or why do we have more mid-state 61s or 62s, things like that, is that this is a very divisive grade, all right? You could show this to a bunch of people and they're going to say, well, there's more chatter and there's more contact marks on the coin that I firmly believe it should be more AU, all right? Or you give it to another person, okay, and let's, let's assume that these people are uh, adhering to the current grading standards, okay? They're going to say, well, this coin is undergraded. It should really be a 61 or a 62. I find it incredibly sexy to the fact that this is a 60 
it's this beautiful stunning toner but all the while this coin looked like it got jostled in a in a mint bag at the mint you know at one point or the fed reserve bank um so you know this particular and th this is kind of like a microcosm of what's going on right now because we have this new grading company cac g that's adhering to the old grading standards from back in the 80s a lot of people are excited about it but guess what guess who's not excited about it pcgs ngc and maybe to a lesser extent annex grading as well the big reason why is they're making incredibly insane amounts of money on big huge large kind of bulk submissions right it's like you know, you send me 100 coins, I'm going to charge you $10 a coin. And I'm just citing this as an example. It's not exactly correct as far as the tiering and how much it's priced at. But you send me 100 coins, I'm going to grade them all, okay? And of course, 100 coins is a lot of coins. Even to one, uh, one coin grader at the company, you know, it's going to take a little while. But at the same time, they're going to spend less time on each coin to get it graded because... Once you accept a submission to work on, you have to do every single coin in the submission. You can't say, well, I only feel like doing these 10 coins and I'll give this to Joe Schmo over here, you know, and he'll do the rest. Okay. It doesn't quite work out that way. <laughs> so, um, I had people that say, oh, that's what they do. I mean, you know, I highly doubt it. Um, and that's why when you look on your submission forms, you know, there is like one or one designated signature for the main grader. And then you have people that audit the grades, all right, uh, and that also sign off on it. It's not just one person that looks at every single coin, um, but there is a secondary person that after the initial set of grades have been provided, that they'll go back and actually give it a second look. Um, but a lot of what we're seeing now today is a lot of coins that grade insanely high, and they're actually way too high compared to what the normal grading standards is. Um, the coin show radio on YouTube, um, Matt and Mike were just at the Baltimore Whitman show and they had actually interviewed, um, and I'm probably going to butcher his name, Ron Drizuki, um, uh, geez, I, I, ha I have his name here, guys. Um, Ron Drizuki, <laughs> Wookie, I, 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 it's, I can't get it right, you know, 99% of the time. But anyways, he's the president of CAC-G Grading. They actually had the opportunity to interview him. And he said, you know, we're going to kind of fix things from the bottom up, okay? We're going to try and tackle uh, a lot of the overgraded coins. We're here for the collector, okay, which makes a lot of sense because it, there's going to be a lot more attention to detail when it comes to the final product. Um, but in, in no, in, in no kind of like short way did, did he say, we have taken X amount of coins that, that were graded a perfect 70 and it was a lot. It was hundreds of coins, so assuming like kind of maybe silver eagles or something like that. Um, and we took those coins and we went through them and maybe only a handful of them had actually qualified as a perfect 70 through CAC G's grading standards. And that is incredibly telling of where we're at in the market today. You know, is PCGS and NGC just certainly pushing out uh, the these incredible grades and overpopulating, you know, the, the census of perfect 70 silver eagles that they are all of a sudden less special and are still worth close to what the actual spot price of silver eagles are? That's kind of what we're seeing right now. Because last time I checked, a perfect 70 unk eagle is probably only worth about 40 bucks, somewhere around there. Um, and, and that's on, on a high side. I've, I've actually seen some that have sold for, you know, under that. But, you know, the, the company CAC G is putting special back into coin grading. Now, the, the problem up to this point is that CACG has done this certification service where they issue a green or a gold sticker on select PCGS and NGC coins that they felt was undergraded, but they they only allowed up to 3,000, I believe 3,000 members, okay? I could get some clarification on that, 
that are signed up to CAC to do the service. And that hasn't changed up until now. They've made a few announcements um, over the last couple coin shows. The Baltimore Whitman show, we've heard some uh, some rumblings there. I was at the a a Money Show in Colorado Springs and have heard also the same thing. Uh, actually, Adam Chambers had talked to the folks at CAC, and they're going to allow free, uh, not free, but they're going to allow people to sign up for CAC G grading here in the next 30 to 60 days. Um, as a matter of fact, the upcoming Northeast Oklahoma Coin Show, which I will be a part of and I'll have my own uh, table uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, CAC G will be there as well. And they're going to have a special Tulsa specific label that's going to be available for people that want to submit their coins through them. So their timeline is such that between now and that upcoming Tulsa show in June, that this is going to be a reality. All right. This is going to be yet again, another um, tool in a lot of dealers toolbox. Okay. We're signed up with PCGS. We're signed up with NGC. We're going to do CAC grading as well. And this is going to be kind of where that rubber meets the road. Should we, should we rely more on CAC G? Are we going to see some insane premiums for CAC G graded coins because they're grading like old school from the 80s? I think we're already seeing that. And it's going to be something, ladies and gentlemen, that it's going to make more waves between now and I would say the next 12 months. And there's going to be a lot of testing the waters here on the secondary market of CAC G graded coins. And I think it's going to be incredibly explosive, especially when they are supporting the collectors here. They're supporting an original OG grading standard that we haven't seen since 1985. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Are you in with CAC G? I, I know I love me my PC just graded coins too, but this might be an opportunity for me to join a company that I firmly believe has the best interest in mind of a lot of collectors. And uh, this is going to be something that's going to be talked about for a while now. So, I don't know. I would love to hear what you guys think. All right? Do you have any thoughts whatsoever? I know a lot of people are, are against coin grading, and they prefer just to collect raw coins. I'm with you. I have a collection that's probably 98% all raw, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm a traditionalist when it comes to filling in those albums, things like that. And, um, you know, this is just kind of like a supplement to our hobby. Um, but it's also worth mentioning, who do you trust from this point forward? That's, that's going to be what it comes down to. So that's why what I wanted to talk about today. I hope you guys have a great day. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound, and uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to today's video if you enjoy it, and I shall see you guys later. Take care.